had a lot of questions since my photo shoot about nutrition, training, how I went about doing things. So basically what I've done is written all those questions down and I'm going to be um, starting a new video series, answering them, going into a bit more depth, which will hopefully help you um, obviously achieve your goals, uh, fat loss goals, nutrition goals, training goals, whatever it might be. So first question I had, which I want to go over, is like, what's my secret? So it's worth knowing that there is no secret. Um, <laughs> there isn't, simple as that really. It's just everything you see in, in sort of the fitness marketing world is everything is, is t tailored just towards sales, tailored toward obviously people picking the magazine up or the article up and reading it. Um, simple matter of fact is the, the fundamentals are the same for fat loss whether you go um, sort of more on the extreme scale or you go more just on the general health uh, well-being sort of looking to lose a few pounds feel better about yourself uh, that's sort of um, achieving that so <clears throat> what I want to get into first is um, the key factors so I'm going to explain to you how you go about uh, losing body fat whilst maintaining as much muscle tissue as you possibly can. This is very general, obviously it's not going to be very, well, it can't be specific because this is, but some things are the same across the board, okay? So the first thing I want to go into is you need to have a reason why you're about to engage or start something. Um, so the main reason for me uh, starting a photo shoot prep was just because I wanted to see and I wanted to get a condition, the best condition of my life basically. I wanted to get as lean as I as I possibly could. I saw it a bit of a cha as a bit of a challenge. Like obviously I'm not um, the youngest personal trainer in the world, but I wanted to I wanted to be able to say like look back like obviously in a fair few years time and be like yeah right okay that's why I looked like then. I want something as a as a as a as a baseline to sort of improve on. Um, that was my. Uh, it's a bit of a challenge. So it's a challenge. It's something to look back on and say, yeah, I've done it. Um, also, I suppose, yeah, it's a good form of marketing. Like, I knew previously that I could get someone in shape, but doing it is another thing. So I just use myself as an example. So like the whole time through. When I was at my heaviest and sorry, like worst looking body composition wise in uni, that sort of like progressively got better over the years and like sort of this is the sort of the pinnacle so far of my training and um, yeah my training career really so to speak. So that my that was my independent reason. Um, so yours could be maybe you want to look good for a holiday, an X amount of weeks, or you know you've got a wedding or you know. You're just being really honest with yourself. You're sick of feeling fat, frumpy. Um, you, you're not confident in clothes. You find yourself, you know, things sticking to places that you don't really want them to stick. And you, you know it's, and it's having an effect on the way you're thinking and the way you're living your life. Yeah. So it could be something. It could be something from those. It could be something that's more individual to you. It could be for health purposes. It could be whatever. But you've got to have that reason there. Okay. So number two is what you've got to do next is set a goal. Okay. So best way to do this is reverse engineer uh, the path so how I went about doing it was jump from knew what I was um, roughly weighing in at looked at myself in the mirror thinking how much do I need to take off this to get to sort of sort of shredded look that I want to achieve guesstimated that it was roughly like 10 10 kilos around that mark um, and I gave myself uh, 16 weeks to to achieve that so there's plenty of time for me to go about achieving that goal so I wasn't having to rush um, I wasn't having to panic near photo shoot time everything was sort of on plan I could afford to take things a bit easier I wasn't pushing as hard obviously reducing the likely risk of me burning out and feeling feeling uh, like you know like crap for the whole prep so it's important that you're realistic with your goals I was probably left I probably gave myself too long so looking back, I probably narrow that down to about 12 weeks. But what I'm conscious of is never going back to the initial shape that I was. So I'm never 
going to go back to where I was sitting at 80k looking like I did. Um, just not going to happen. Um, if I go back to sit, well, if my idea now is obviously to put muscle on. So if I, <clears throat> in a few years' time, whatever, I achieve 80 kilograms again, I'm going to look a hell of a lot different than I did at the start of the prep to how I will do, hopefully, in a few years' time. Um, and the number three is establishing your calorie intake. So you've got to know roughly what's going on um, in terms of what's going in and out of your mouth. Um, you need to know, there's like loads of formulas out there. You can get them on the internet. The classic, classic one would be like the Harris Benedict formula. You can use that one. It goes off your weight, your height, your age, your gender. And basically it'll, you spit the numbers in and it spits the numbers out telling you roughly sort of like how much you should be eating um, a day to maintain your body weight. Then obviously you've got to take into consideration your activity levels, uh, and then which it does if you go through it. Um, and then from there you've got to create a deficit. So I recommend roughly just an easy general way of doing things is just creating a 500 calorie deficit a day. So if you're finding that hard to achieve, uh, hard to like hit the, the your calorie target, uh, then you need to sort of look at why. Is it because you, you're just struggling for the like amount of food? Well, if that's the case, then you probably need to increase your food and increase your output because it's worth noting that like if calories are too low um, from the start and you're going to be struggling in the first week or so, or maybe even like the first initial few months, it's going to be a long, long. It's going to everything's going to feel like a chore and it's going to be. It's not going to be enjoyable at all. So you might that might lead to um, adherence problems long term. Well, not problems, but adherence issues. And and the main number one key factor in the whole fat loss realm is adherence. Yeah. So if you can't stick to it long term, then what's the point? Because it's not going to get you to where you want to be. You have to change your behaviours and your habits, and that's the only way really of 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 getting to where you want to get long term. Okay, in terms of training. You want to be weight training. Um, obviously, weight training is going to promote muscle. Um, muscle is more aesthetically pleasing than fat, essentially, as well. Um, but again, it's not. It's finding that balance between, like, you know, I could be as specific, sciencey, and in theory of as I wanted. But if I'm not going to stick to it, then I'm not going to do it. Then I'm not going to get the desired result. So. If you enjoy weight training, weight train. If you enjoy uh, Zumba, do Zumba. However, you can't expect to see the same sort of results from Zumba as you can from weight training in terms of body composition. So, in terms of what I did from uh, leading up to the photo shoot was essentially minimal from maximal. So I was looking to start off my volume quite low initially, and then as things start to plateau and, and slow down, then I was looking to increase my output further by increasing sets, increasing reps, um, increasing like uh, general TDE, so total daily energy expenditure, which is like things like walking, um, just from that I can incorporate quite easily into my everyday life. So like walk to the shops as opposed to jump in the car, uh, walk to work as opposed to jump in the car. So these little things that you can sort of ingrain as habits what would happen if I went all in straight off the bat, said, right, that's it, I'm doing, I plan on losing, I don't know, we'll say, for example, 10 kilos in 10 weeks, and we're going to go for it. I'm going to do seven weight sessions a week. I'm going to do two hours of uh, walking a day, and I'm going to do a hit, se hit session three times a week, for example. When things slow down, what am I supposed to, what do you do? Like, there's no option to increase your output from there it's literally like right okay well i'm stuffed now i've hit a plateau what do i do it has to in that situation what has to happen is your food has to drop now i don't know about you but personally i love food so the higher my food intake is the better because i'm more likely to stick to the plan because i enjoy eating food i'm still a fat man at heart so you know food's a big thing and obviously Food's big when it comes to social situations and, you know, life in general, really. Everyone enjoys food going out with 
um, spouses or you know whatever family it's a big part of socializing and if you can't or you know you're not allowed or you're restricted and you're more likely that well from a, for me personally I'm more likely then to go think oh well I want it whereas previously whereas if, if sorry whereas if output's high enough you can sort of look to eat a bit more and it'll sort of level itself out so I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it's answered a few of your questions um, if you've got any like questions pop them in the comments send me a direct message or whatever um, feel free to like comment and share on this you might help some what someone uh, that's uh, that wants to know more and yeah I'm gonna do very another one very soon so I'll speak to you soon